Good evening, everybody. This, this crowd is not excited. Have you guys eaten this evening? Drank water. Good evening, everybody. Much better. We'll, we'll try one more time. I can fight. Forgive me. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, guys. Um, my name is Hanu. I'm the founder and CEO of Patricia. Um, for those of you who do not know, Patricia, we're a crypto exchange company, and um, our mission is to make cryptocurrency easy. Uh, I've run Patricia for the past four years, founded in 2017, and um, at Patricia, we like to have a lot of firsts. In um, 2019, we introduced Africa's first ever crypto debit card. Uh, fast forward in uh, 2020, we are, so we like to see ourselves as that bridge, you know, that would bring cryptocurrency to the forefront of Africa. You know, but we also understand that there's going to be a long transitional phase before cryptocurrency becomes mainstream. You know, what do we do before that time comes? That's where we come in as Patricia. We try to be that bridge that is bridging um, traditional finance, traditional banking infrastructure to the blockchain. And um, what we did was we introduced everyday activities into cryptocurrency where you can literally uh, pay for your electricity, you can pay for GoTV, you can buy airtime, just everything you can do regularly, but you can now do it built upon the blockchain. And these have seen us grow tremendously. We have over 700,000 users on our platform. Um, we have active presence in Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, um, uh, South Africa launching soon. We have the UK, Asia, and also in the US. And um, just a quick read back into Patricia and who we are and what we do. Uh, today I'm speaking about the endless possibility for blockchain in Africa. And it's a very exciting topic. Uh, coming here, I, I was in my car driving down and I was thinking about it. And uh, the first thing that came to mind was electricity. That is how I like to liken um, what the blockchain technology is. You know, today we look around and we see electricity all around us. You can't really see it, you can't really touch it, but it powers everything around us. Same thing with the blockchain. And um, time and time again, we see the advent of new technologies built on electricity. Now let's go back all the way to the 1800s when Michael Faraday invented um, electricity. Did he ever imagine that in, 20, in the 2020s there would be a very crazy man called Elon Musk that would build electric cars? He didn't imagine that, right? And that was just that's exactly what the blockchain is today. We are still in the very early phases and the blockchain is like electricity. So now we, all, we have seen the power of cryptocurrency, which is where Patricia comes in, where we can move money from one point to another point in the world, right? And it's, it's delivered in minutes, in seconds. We see the advent of Ethereum, where we can now write contracts. Uh, I'll start by explaining what the blockchain is before I talk about the application of the blockchain. To put it very basic, right? Um, one of the biggest challenges that, that human beings have from the inception of time is trust. That was why money was created, or one of the reasons why money was created, something we can all agree on as a value of exchange. And that is the same um, basics of what the blockchain has been built on. The blockchain basically is a ledger that verifies integrity. The blockchain basically says one would always remain one as long as it was imputed into the system. So the blockchain is a ledger that verifies authenticity. And on that ledger, you can build anything you want. What we have seen now is cryptocurrency became a huge boom built upon this ledger of what the blockchain stands for. Now Patricia and a lot of other companies in Nigeria have been able to build upon that and we have businesses that are thriving, that are employing people all around blockchain. So firstly, as a medium of exchange, 
the blockchain is um, the blockchain can be applied there to cryptocurrencies. Another th another very interesting one is NFTs, right? And NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Basically, what cannot be replicated. That's exactly what an NFT is, a digital artwork that cannot be, cannot be replicated. But far more than just it being an artwork, right? What are the other applications for the blockchain around NFTs? Ownership. Just for the fact that I own, uh, I own a piece of artwork that can't be verified by anybody anywhere in the world by just putting in a string in the blockchain network, right? It literally changes the game. It's kind of like the same thing we talk about with Instagram, right? Where we have these verified people on Instagram. They don't, you don't see them walking up and down with the verified badge on their head, right? But it is there, and it identifies them as verified people. That is the same thing that the NFT does, but for the rest of the world. And today, anything can become an NFT anything that can be digital. And we have seen people make millions of dollars, crypto punks, what hundreds of thousands of dollars just from the idea of the blockchain, building upon what the blockchain is. And there are so many, many, many more applications. Um, still on this, right, there was, there was a gentleman from Uverify who, who, who works in um, identity. The blockchain can also be used in, in that regard also. Because what the blockchain is in its ethos is basically um, maintaining integrity, in integrity of transactions, integrity of everything that we are doing. That is the underlying technology. Blockchain used in elections. I know many people would not want to hear this, but it's, it's possible. We can use the blockchain to verify votes. Instead of taking six months, ballot, ballot buses, stressing our NYS students, putting them at risk. What if we could build a technical solution based off the blockchain? We all have smartphones with us, right? We all download an app and we verify that we are the ones at the back of it. Each, each, each identity to one, to one vote. And this is built upon the blockchain that it cannot be retraced. We can finish and start an election in three hours powered by the use of the blockchain. And there are so many more use cases that, I've, that I have noted down. One minute, guys. All right, so that's one for elections. Where else can we use the blockchain technology, right? We can equally use the, the blockchain technology as an investment vehicle. Now we have um, lots of technology being used, DeFi, yield solutions, but basically a way where you can give loans and you can receive loans just based off of smart contracts. You know, and um, breaking it down a little bit more, what are smart contracts? A smart contract basically says, um, by tomorrow morning, if it rains, send one Ethereum to Mr. X. If tomorrow morning it doesn't rain, send one Ethereum to Hanu. That's basically what a smart contract is. But now we don't have to give that power to a company or to um, an individual, right? We can actually know if it rains tomorrow by putting up a Google search when the time comes. So we can write a smart contract that basically says that, and by 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, right? It will execute that contract based off of the result it gets off the internet. And that's the beauty of the blockchain technology. You know, we see um, Ethereum, Solana, being able to execute smart contracts, and that's what makes them special, you know? So how else can we apply the blockchain as investment vehicles, you know? Now, at Patricia, we are toiling of, over the idea of risk-free betting, something very different, you know, risk-free betting powered by the blockchain. And how does it work? Very, very simple, right? Let's say everybody here brings a thousand dollars. Everybody takes a thousand dollars and puts it into a pool. And in a month's time, 
based off of what the blockchain has been, right, you can keep your money in a pool and it earns 10 percent in one month. Everybody comes together, puts a thousand dollars, that becomes a million dollars, right, in a pool, and in a month's time, that million dollars becomes one million hundred thousand risk free betting. Now, a month is a month has elapsed, people are waiting to find out who the winners are. The system will programmatically pick four, five, six, seven people, right? Give everybody back their initial investment, and a couple of people in that lot will be able to share the hundred thousand dollars, right, and at no cost. Risk free betting. So these are the innovations that can be built on the blockchain, and these are just the early phases of it. We have not even begun to scratch the surface of what it can be. Um, identity verification, talking about hospital documentation. Imagine we had a central system for the entire country where once you, once you go into any hospital, regardless of where you are, in the nation, and you go into the hospital, all you have to do is give them your ID. And from your ID, they can pull up your data, your historical data that is on the blockchain, and they know exactly who you are, what you are, what allergies you have, you have what ailments you have. Imagine you, there's a car accident and this man cannot speak, but just for the fact that he has his ID on him, we can use the blockchain to extract that information and save a man's life. We can go on and on. Thank you, my guy. So we can go on and on as to you know, how we can implement the blockchain. And I'm already beginning to see very, very fantastic ideas being built on the blockchain. Every other day, I get proposals of even more fantastic ideas that can, that can be built upon this solution. And this is exactly what innovation is. You know, this is, this is the blockchain basically, um, the blockchain basically is what we should be looking towards. towards. And I, I'll say this particularly for Africans and for the people in this room, right? As a, as a continent and as a people, we are, in quotes, the minority. You know, I travel these days and there is always this vibe about you being a Nigerian. There's always this stigma about you being a Nigerian. And I talk to you now and it's normal, right? But if I'm not in Nigeria, I automatically have an accent because I'm different. But here we are all guys, we're all Gs, you know, there's no problem. So what's my point? What I'm trying to drive at is when you think about Germany, you think about cars, right? You think about America, you think MBA, you think um, Apple, you think about Switzerland, London, you think finance, right? Blockchain technology is something that Africans and Nigerians, we can win at. It's something that we can succeed on, right? And this is 100% no cap. We have been succeeding on, in this industry with zero support. We have been succeeding in this industry with just vibes, right? But imagine if we got the support that we needed, right? Imagine if um, the regulators, I really wanted to be honest for the regulator conversation because I had a lot to say, but that's not why I'm here. But imagine if we got the support that we needed from the, from the government, and imagine if we come together and become the support that we need. Blockchain is not bounded by geography. As long as you have a smartphone and you have internet, we can win. And we will win in this industry as long as we continue to do the most and as long as we continue to thrive. So, ladies and gentlemen, with these few points of mine, I hope I've been able to change your narrative around the blockchain technology. Um, I have, I have two more minutes. I can look at the time, time keep up with you. I got two more minutes, so if you have any questions, now would be a very good time. Um, please, would you want to help me with this part of things? Okay.
Hi everyone. I am Adekole Daniel. Um, I built uh, Nigeria first Bitcoin ATM machines. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, Anu, yeah, my question for you is: in scaling, how did you scale Patricia? Yeah. Okay, like remotely, digitally, because I deal with physical, like turning paper money to fiat mm -hmm. eh, to digital currencies. Mm -hmm. So how did you scale with that? Thank you. Um, so first of all, I think you have a very wonderful idea. Paper, would you, um, would, sorry, would you want us to take all the questions? So I, I'm, I don't mind, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, excuse me, can I just go one after the other? I'll forget. All right, that's fine. All right, thank you. All right, um, so I think you're onto something very fantastic. I think before we launched our card in 2019, right, we thought about Bitcoin ATMs, you know, but for us, it just seemed a little bit too um, hazardous because we have to, it's expensive to get, it's something people are not necessarily used to, you have to educate the customers. So we went for cards instead because it's an, it's, it's, it was a low hanging fruit for us, you know, so for help, I was able to scale Patricia. Um, so I work with very first principles, you know, if something works the first time, um, keep doing it until it stops working. You can read this book, Who Moved My Cheese, right? It's simple. If something works right, keep doing it until it stops working. And while you're at it, you keep looking for creative ways to find the next thing. And that's exactly what we, we did. Once, once we tried and tried and tried and we found one gold mine, we went to the end of the world with that while looking for the next big thing. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Henrietta Agbola, and um, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and I'm a multifaceted professional. Thank you very much, Hanu, for your wonderful presentation. You actually lit us up. We're already sleeping. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I noticed that a lot of us are consumers of these Bitcoin technology mm -hmm. or this cryptocurrency technology. And recently I got interested in, you know, rather than being consumers, can we be creators? All right, so I know that people can create their own Bitcoin, their own um, cryptocurrency. So I'd like to find out what's, what is the, um, what I call the advantages or the disadvantages of actually having your own coin, your own cryptocurrency, and what are the best platforms to use in creating that? Okay, um, wonderful question. Um, so, it's a, it's a difficult one, and I'll tell you that because how cryptocurrency works today, it's basically community. Everything around crypto is driven by the community. So that's why you can see an NFT by what Disney is selling out in one second, just because they have the community. When it comes to building cryptocurrency, there is a lot of things to consider. You know, right now we have a whole lot of shit coins all over the place. You put in your money and the next minute it dumps and you are wrecked. So it's very dicey, but if you want to go into creating your coin, there are really, really fantastic projects out there. I think one of my favorite projects today that I think is still very undervalued um, is the Solana blockchain. The Solana blockchain is a very special blockchain in, in, in the fact that it has a feature that most cryptocurrencies or most, most blockchains do not have, which is interoperability. What that means is the Solana blockchain can speak to other blockchains. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's similar to when the NCC launched the port function. So you can literally speak to the Binance Smart Chain, you can speak to blockchain, you can speak to um, Ethereum. So I think you should consider that as a very strong point in um, creating your own token. Good evening, everybody. My name is Vivian Agbata, and I'm the public relations officer for Zen Chain. So um, quick introduction, please pardon me. Zen Chain um, is a blockchain company. Um, it's registered in Lithuania. And just like we're all talking, you, know, you um, spoke about um, features of Solano. We, you, you can actually liken us to that of Solano, right? Um, where we have um, interoperability and um, we have fast transaction speeds better off than Ethereum. I mean, we're a fork of Ethereum, actually. And okay, we built, so far, we built a um, community that is large for now. And, I mean, being a, a Nigerian um, project has been a lot, a lot of difficult, 
you know, try to scale through the, the competition, you know, uh, try to, uh, you know, convince people about your project. But of course, the project is a great one. So because of that, we have a lot of people speaking for us, actually. So now coming down, taking it down to Nigeria, like you said, it's difficult to scale through, right? Because we're Nigerians. Nigerians don't support what Nigerians produce, right? Because if you oh, it's owned by a Nigerian or the idea is from Nigeria. So first, my question is, how do you, what, okay, how do you, as, as uh, a big brand already, how do you, um, how do we tackle this? What, do, what would you say pertaining this, you know, Nigerians supporting what belongs to mm -hmm. them? I mean, um, Zane Chain is an, an African project that is way better than Solano, trust me, if you go through it. <laughs> so, yeah, trust me. So if you go through, if you go through, if you go through the project, you'll find that it has more than what Solano even has. It has more than what Ethereum has, right? But most Nigerians would be like, oh, because the CEO is a Nigerian, because some of the staff are Nigerians, they wouldn't support the project, right? So what would you say to Nigerians pertaining this? That's one. And secondly, as a big man and as a big uh, person in the industry, what would you rather do to support Zenit? Or well, support blockchains as, as powerful as this. Thank you. Okay, um, you put me on the spot. All right. So I think um, what I realized a um, little bit late in running Patricia is that um, gold is gold, right? Gold is gold. And I'll give you an example. So there was this movie I watched that um, made me realize this. So there was this man, an Indian man, who always wanted a son. And he wants his son, he wants his son because he wants his son to be a wrestler and um, represent India in the Commonwealth Games. He tried and tried and tried and he was never able to have a son. He had four daughters, so he was just growing old and growing miserable. Next thing, he, come, he comes back home from work and he sees that his two daughters beat up two boys, and they beat them up mercilessly. He was looking for a, for, for, for a son, but his daughters did exactly what the son would have done. They showed strength, right? And then the man mentioned, gold is gold. And it struck me, you know, and it can be applied to what you guys are building, right? Gold is gold. It doesn't matter if Nigerians are adopting it or not. Right, the, like I said earlier on, blockchain is not bounded by geography, right? So if Nigerians are not, are not, um, are not um, giving you the reception you need, you look, you look elsewhere, right? As, as entrepreneurs, our goal is to succeed. It doesn't matter if, if, if it is necessarily in this, this region or not, right? Our goal is to succeed. And if there's something I know about the Nigerian community, once a project or a product begins to show promise, begins to show success, and there is enough hype around it, they will eventually come around. So you need to focus on gold is gold. Thank you very much for your time. All right, guys. Thank you, you very much time. for your time.